Do you know how frustrating it is seeing a bunch of new VTubers debut after you and they're so much more successful than you are because it looks like they're just trend hopping or copying what's currently popular? Like, look, I've tried doing what's popular and I've also thrown everything I could at a wall hoping something would stick and something eventually did stick for me, but it wasn't exactly something I wanted to stick. And if I could go back in time and restart everything from scratch, then I would because there's a lot of things I would do differently because if you've made the similar mistakes as me, then I don't want you to lose hope and start doubting yourself, thinking that you're not good at VTubing because you're trying to stand out in an oversaturated market. Now, this is not me throwing shade at anyone in particular because I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with how all these popular VTubers go about their content, which I'll talk more about in a moment, but I totally understand why it can feel like VTubing is oversaturated. But how would you feel if I told you that VTubing being oversaturated is just a misconception and that VTuber models themselves are not content, but they're just a medium people use to make content? It might sound kind of obvious, right? But the fact that being a VTuber adds an extra layer to your content does not mean that it's what defines your content. You could have three different VTubers up on a screen who all make the same exact type of content, but only one of them will actually succeed. And a lot of people like to dumb this down to it being that one of the VTuber models is just better looking than the other two. But I don't think it's really that simple because if having a pretty model is all that it takes, then why have we seen so many people get burnt out from constantly debuting and trying to show off these pretty models? It's because they're too focused on being a VTuber and not a content creator. Now that might sound a little confusing, so why don't we talk about the first problem to this big misconception, which is why does everyone think VTubing is oversaturated? We're gonna kind of talk about a few different things. You know, I see some of you are saying like, oh, you know, isn't this like your stereotypical, like is streaming oversaturated, is YouTube oversaturated? In a way, yeah, but there's more nuance to it because we're VTubers, right? VTubing feels saturated because most VTubers are only looking at other VTubers using tags like VTuber Uprising. The th See, and that's very interesting that you're saying that because you're specifically referring to Twitter slash X. What about Reddit or Instagram or TikTok or YouTube itself? You would be surprised at how little people utilize other social medias to promote their debut. It's actually quite interesting. I, I find it very interesting with debut culture, but Again, that's not the only reason why people think VTubing is oversaturated. When I was looking at um, VTuber oversaturation, I saw, I'm not even kidding you, people will debut like their new like VTuber stuff and someone, someone always, there's always that one person, right? There's always that one person that's like, oh, you look like this VTuber or you look like that VTuber. Why, why are you copying them and stuff and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, not every VTuber looks like Iron Mouse, okay? Like, you guys gotta relax, for real. I see that a lot, actually. Not specifically Iron Mouse, just in general. I see people being like, oh, you look like, you look like Shy Lily. Or, oh, you look like Gura. Literally, people in my streams call me, oh, you look like Nyaners. Like, okay. I've seen a lot of discussion about people talking about Doki Bird and how the only reason why she's big now is because of, well, you know, who she used to be back in the day. And it's interesting because a lot of people are making the arguments about how, oh, if, you know, she never joined a company, no one would ever care about her. And I find that very interesting how a lot of people think that they need to join a company in order to stand out because v 2 is just so oversaturated, they can't be successful as an indie, which is just not true at all. You can still very much be successful just doing everything yourself. The only difference is that you don't have the backing of a company or a team to really help you. And you're pretty much just a person wearing multiple different hats since you have to do everything yourself. And that can be very overwhelming to someone who is just starting out. Or if you've been doing this for a long time, you know how important it is to do marketing to edit your videos, to come up with titles, thumbnails, and just pretty much doing everything yourself. And also, I never really understood the whole concept of why people try so hard to copy other really big creators in the sense of like their entire design, their whole silhouettes, even their color palette. I know people don't really own their own color palette because, well, I mean, some companies own colors and hex codes, but that's besides the point. There's a lot of VTubers who really truly believe that the only way that they'll grow is by copying exactly what every other big and popular creator is doing right now. And sure, that is 
just one way to grow. But from what I have seen, it tends to lead to a lot of burnout because, well, you are not that person. You can't keep up and have the same type of resources or creative ability like that person can. You were not them. And at the end of the day, why would somebody want to watch you over them anyways? This was a pretty big mistake that I had to kind of learn for myself because I used to really want to try to be like everybody else too, since I thought that was the only way you could grow. Until I realized that the only way you can grow is to get people to like what it is that you have to offer, which is kind of hard to figure out if you don't really know what it is that you have to offer or the things that you think you have to offer are not really the things you have to offer. Look, I used to be the kind of person where I used to think that I wanted what Iron Mouse had until you start attracting the same type of people that Iron Mouse has. And then you realize you don't actually vibe with this group of people. Once again, there's nothing wrong with Iron Mouse's audience and I'm not throwing any kind of shade, but I think in order to stand out as a VTuber, you have to stop chasing after other people's communities because you don't actually want their audience, you want your own. And the only way you can truly create your own community is by making content that your audience actually cares about. This might explain why you'll hear YouTube gurus on Twitter constantly use the word target audience. To answer like some of your questions that some of you are asking in chat, how can you like stand out? How can you still like grow with all this oversaturation? Because like where everyone just seems to be doing the same thing. You have reaction content, you have smasher pass, you have karaoke uh, streams. And there's also tier list. Yeah, you have tier list. That's true. Um art streams, you also have, let's see, what's another thing that a lot of VTubers all do right now? ASMR, yeah, that's a big thing with VTubers too. Everyone always does those, right? You consider karaoke streams are a staple. That's interesting, because I've never done a karaoke stream, so that's interesting that you say that. I find that very interesting. Popular game at the moment, yeah, that's true. That's just like a streamer thing in general though, right? That, that's not really, I don't know why my tongue just came out there, ignore that. How do people like stand out when you have all these metas and it's like, if you don't do these metas, you'll never grow. And if you don't act or look or say things like this VTuber, then you know, you're not gonna get noticed. And then at the same time, it's like, oh, well, everyone's doing that. So, you know, people don't care about anyone else who does not do those things and all this like stuff, right? You wanna hear something that's kind of funny to think about? There are tons of people who do not like VTubers and my mod Aerith is one of them. Yeah, I know, I know how to pick them well, right? Well, okay, if he doesn't like VTubers, then why is he my mod? And that's because he does watch VTubers. And I'm not talking about just me. I've seen him share a couple of clips of my friend Abby Kadabra from V4 Mirror Eyes, and it's one of her shorts. And I asked him why he's watching her content if he doesn't like VTubers. And his answer to me was that he likes watching her shorts because he thinks the concept itself is funny. And her shorts are all about making these little skits or situations about VTubing and like the parody of it is entertaining to him. Something else that he said to me that really stuck with me, and I think it will make more sense to you when thinking about overcoming, you know, oversaturation and standing out in the VTubing industry, is that he has said to me, you know, your main audience is going to be people who enjoy VTubers, sure. But what about your casual viewers? The whole point of being a content creator is making content that reaches people beyond your tight niche community. Think about it. Does everyone who watch Mr. Beast consider themselves a diehard fan? No. A lot of people who don't like Mr. Beast personally will still watch his content because, well, his content is fun to watch. It's entertaining. But then again, Aerith is just a normie who likes to watch PNG tubers make these hour-long commentary videos talking about things like the whole Yandere dev situation, and I kept making fun of him for an entire hour, and his response was, I'll watch a VTuber or a PNG tuber or Barney on a screen if the topic they're discussing is actually interesting to me. And I think that's probably the biggest takeaway you can get from this video. And no, I don't mean the whole like, oh, it's be it's because, you know, it's the PNG thingy and like Mario's making- No, 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 it's not that. The takeaway is that we have the luxury of blending both IRL and VTubing content that can appeal to a much wider range of audience than ever before. So turn on that hand cam and start experimenting, baka. And I just want to reassure you that this is a lot easier said than done because remember when I said earlier in the video about how if I could, I would start over and do everything again from scratch? Well, I kind of did that on this channel. And even though the types of videos I made back in 2020 are different than they are now, I still make pretty much the same content, except now people actually want to watch it. After all, you stuck around all the way until the end of this video, right? That's why it's important to make valuable content for your target audience because, well, you're my target audience. That's right. 
I made this video specifically with you in mind, and now I hope me sharing my observations and personal experiences have resonated with you because now that we know our content is the problem and not us as a creator or, you know, our models per se, we now have a new problem to solve together, which is how do you make content that both stands out and is something people actually want to watch? Well, there's a couple of different things that I've observed others do and I decided to try it out and I've seen some pretty interesting results from it. So if you're interested in learning more about that, then let's talk about that more in this video here because remember, everything reminds you of something.